happen to be sitting in the front row, that, that actually applies to you as well. So, I mean, it's kind of one of those things that uh, as you look at that, as you watch it, you go, wow, that is, uh, that is how most mornings happen at a lot of our houses, you know, and that's just not Sundays, it's all of them. So good morning again, everybody, and uh, what I want you to do is I just want you to look at the person to your right or left and just say good morning, because it is a great morning, it's going to be an awesome day, and if there's not anybody sitting next to you, tap the person on their shoulder and just say hello. We are starting this series called Toxic. So this series is toxic, and many of life's battles are fought right inside of our minds. They are right here. All of our battles are just completely fought here. All the things that we worry about, all the things that we think about, it's in our own head. It's not anywhere else. Nobody else is dealing with the stuff that you have going around in your mind. And so today, we're really going to start in with, the, with just toxic thoughts. What are you thinking? You know, as I even brought that up right now, what are you thinking about right now? On the top of your notes, just go ahead and write it down. Just go, ah, uh, bills, car payment. What is it? What is it that's sitting right there on the top of your brain? How, you know, you could go, man, the lighting sucks in here. That could be that too. You could do, say the same thing. You could do whatever it is that's on your mind because those are the negative things that we're going to talk about a little bit and how they destroy what we have going on. Paul in Romans 7, he comes out and he gives us this really, really clear thing. And he comes, and he, and, well, that's not clear, but he talked about how he was fighting with difficulties as well. You know, he comes out, for I know that good itself does not dwell in me. It is in my sinful nature, for I have a desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. How many of us are like that? How many of us, we want to do good? We want to. Nobody in here is going, yes, I want to do bad. No, I don't want to pay my bills. Yes, I want to do exactly what God has asked me to do. Nobody in here goes, I want life to suck. I want to struggle all the time. Nobody signed up for that. Nobody signed up and said, hey, let's, let's, make, it all, uh, let's make life just as completely difficult as possible. For I do not, for I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I don't want to do. This I keep doing. Mind you, this is Paul. This is Paul who's talking here, and he's going, I, I want to do good. I want to, but I just have problems doing it all the time. I have problems with it. I want to do good. Is that how most of us are? Anybody in here? Anybody in here signed up to do bad in life? Put your hand up if you signed up to do bad in life. <laughs> wait a minute, I got mine up there. Wait, wait. <laughs> Let's do it again. Let's, anybody sign up to do good in life? You want to, be, you want to do good, right, everybody? Okay. Just checking. Just checking. <laughs> but he comes out and he goes, now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is the sin living in me that does it. It is the sin that dwells in us. This is Paul, and it's not in your notes, and it's Romans 7, and it's verses 18 through 20, if you want to write it down. And it's really, you know, as I was writing the message over the last couple of days, I was really sitting there, and I was going, isn't that how most of us live? We just live with this mindset that I want to do what's right, I want to do good, but it's the sin living inside of me that can that continue to do what is wrong. The battle is fought in our mind. That's where it lives at. It's, it's fought in our mind. Jesus didn't come here to make us religious. He did not come here to make us religious. He came here to set us free. He came here to set us free from religion. Guys, most of us, we don't understand this. The root word for religious is bondage. You guys know that? The Greek, it's, it, when you start looking at it, the root word for religious is bondage. It's lugo, L-I-G-O. It means to bind. It means to tie over. Jesus didn't come to bind us and tie us over. He came to set us free. He came to give us life. He came to allow us to do what he intended us to do. But all so often, our toxic thoughts hold us back and make us do what we think is right rather than what God thinks is right. Jesus came to give us light, life, not tie us down in religion. Toxic, we need a working definition. Toxic, anything containing poisonous material capable of causing sickness or even death. Anything containing poisonous materials that causes sickness and death. That's, that's Merriam-Webster's English version dictionary. So if you want to know what it means, that's what it is. In your mind, we have toxic thoughts. And guess what those thoughts do? They cause us to get to this point where we, fight, where we start facing death. Because that's what it does. You start talking to certain people. Start talking to people that have been depressed and they've been stressed out for a long, long time. 
You start looking at it, you can tell instantly that there's something wrong. You look at their face, it looks tired. You look at their hair, all of a sudden they're 24 and they got more gray hair than an 80 year old. You're sitting there and you're going, what is going on? They start pulling their hair out. They, you know, they're, they're, all of a sudden they're walking around with a shiny, brow, a shiny bald head and they're only 19. How is it that we've gotten to this point where that happens? It's because we do it to ourselves. Instead of giving ourselves life-giving words and life-giving thoughts, we give ourselves toxic thoughts and deathly thoughts. We take it away from ourselves all the time. We destroy ourselves. If you think negative thoughts, if you think it, you will be negative. If you think negative thoughts all the time, you will be negative. It will always continue to be that way. Your life, you'll go, why does life suck? It always sucks. It's always... Well, guess what? It's always going to be that way. But now if you think godly thoughts, and by godly thoughts, by life-giving, by encouraging, by all, guess what happens? You get to become that way. You start becoming life-encouraging. Encouraging. You start becoming this life-giving person. You start talking about things all the time. It's us that are the worst offenders. It's us. All the time, we're negative, 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 negative. And we go, why is it that I feel sick? Or why is it that I'm not happy? Or have you ever thought about being happy? Have you thought about what you're supposed to do? Have you thought about how you're going to change your life? Have you thought about how you're going to move forward in this world? Now, it is the thought that counts. Repeat after me. It is the thought that counts. All right, you're not very convincing. It is the thought that counts. Should I do that again? I think I did. It is the thought that counts. If it's the thought that counts, then why are you so negative? It is the thought that counts. <sighs> Identify and reject toxic thoughts. In your life, you need to start looking at it and you need to start identifying and rejecting the thoughts that you have that are just continuing to put you down because you all have them. We, each one of us have them. We all have, well, how's this ever gonna get done? How are we gonna pay for this house? How are we gonna pay for this? How is this gonna get done? We all have these thoughts. It happens over and over again. You have to identify and reject those. You have to get rid of them. Proverbs 4.23. And I love the CEV version or the, C, you know, you guys might see the common English. You might see it. But I love this version because it's just so laid out for us. And it says, carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. Carefully guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. What are you thinking about? When you're laying in bed, tossing and turning, what are you thinking about? When you're sitting there and you go, why can't I sleep? Why can't I get to sleep? What's on your mind? What are you thinking about? Have you opened up the Bible recently? Or are you just continuing to stress and you're not going to change anything? I will tell you is that no matter how much you roll around in the sheets, you have not changed your circumstances at all. You, you, all you've done is made it to where it takes you 10 minutes longer to make the bed because you have to re-put on that fitted sheet. You haven't changed anything. Your life hasn't changed at all. You've just laid there, tossed and turned, and, and, and deprived yourself of sleep. Open up the Bible and start focusing on what God has to say. Focus your thoughts. Guard your thoughts. Guard them. It is, it is a battle. Guard your thoughts. It is a battle. You're always going to be thinking of negative things. You're always going to be thinking you want something else. Guard your thoughts because they are the source of true life. Paul again tells us in 2 Corinthians, he goes, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. They're not. They're not the weapons from here. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Now, we need to stop right there. Now, when you hear power, power is a, is, a, is a strong word when they're talking about it here. It's not just one of these, it's not just one of these, oh, it's power, it's like a generator, I just pull the string and it starts up. No, it is, it, the root word for it, it's got a Greek meaning, you know, when you start, guys, all of our language comes from Latin or Greek, and so when you start looking at it, when we read power, it's dymo. Guess what it, guess what it means? It means dynamite. That's the root word, it goes into dynamite. What is dynamite? Dynamite is explosive. It's explosive. That's how much power our thoughts have. It is explosive. It can demolish strongholds. Now, you hear strongholds, and I have it underlined for a reason because there's another Greek word I got to give you. You know, there's another one that I got to tell you is that because when we read strongholds, you look at it and go, what are they really talking about? And it's, it's okorama. Okorama. 
That's what it means, okarama. And, and it's a person locked by deception. Are you locked by deception? That's what it means, strongholds. It's a false deception. What are you locked by? What are you, what are you tied up by? Think about what you have going on. Your, talk to, your, your thoughts, you have this power to break through things, but so often you just continue to keep yourself in this box, in this cage, and you look there and it's your own deception that's put you there. How do we change it? How do we move forward? How do we do life the way that we're supposed to do it? We need to start by number one, identifying things. In your, in your notes, there's four boxes there, or maybe there's just a couple lines, and there's the first one. It's negative. How many of you guys had these negative thoughts? You don't have to raise your hand. It's, your notes are right there. You can check the box. Negative. Everything sucks. You have, you have perfected complaining. You, ha, you have gotten it so good that everything is like, how do I? It, 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 everything sucks. That car sucks. My, my, the wheels suck. This sucks. Everything sucks. You're just negative about everything. You know, I go, my kids, they don't have this problem, they don't have that problem. You're just negative all the time. Instead of going life-giving, you're just like, oh, woe is me. How am I going to ever fix this? How is this going to... It's negative. If you're like that at all, and I go extreme sometimes, but if you're like that at all, just go ahead and check the box, say, yep, I'm negative. Now, the next one is fearful. How many of us are fearful? You look at this and you go, how, how are we going to pay the bills? How are we going to start tithing? Because if we start tithing, God won't, how am I going to be able to pay the house payment? How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? Oh my God, what happens if my wife gets in a car accident and I have three kids? Nobody wants this. <laughs> how do you get to that point? How do we get there? We get to this mindset. We go, oh, the world is coming to an end. It's coming. That's fearful. Go ahead and check that box if that's you. Maybe you didn't take it to the extreme that I did. You know, I mean, I, nobody will ever marry this guy. I mean, come on. Three kids, a pastor, they're going to think I'm judgmental. It's going to, you know. Yeah. There's some of us that are just discontented. Everything we want better. You know, you have this perfectly great car in the driveway, and you go, I need to go get a new car. You have... You have a house and you're going, I gotta sell this one and go get another house. I've got this, I gotta go get rid of that. I, gotta, I, I always need bigger and better. You just are completely envious of everything else out there. You're like, I need this. I gotta have this. I gotta have that. You know, I gotta, you know, and, if, and sometimes as women, I'm gonna tell you right now, you probably, you probably don't even realize you do it sometimes. Because guys, we do it all the time. I mean, it's easy for us to go, we, we can be that boy. But women, you go, Oh, your hair is so beautiful. And I use my wife as an example because that's, she does your hair so you can come over and see her anytime you want. But, but, it's, but really that's what happens is that we go, I want that. My hair needs to look that way. My hair needs to look like that little child that's running around in here that's two years old and it's all poofy and she, it's, I, got, I need to do that. Saw it today on Facebook. That's how it gets. We get to where we want something that somebody else has. How do you have this? Oh, you have a boat? I need to get a boat. What am I going to do to get there? How am I going to just all this discontent? How do I get there? How do I get this done? How do I get that done? And your whole life revolves around acquiring goods instead of doing what God has asked you to do. Now, my favorite one is the critical one. That's my favorite. The critical one. You look at everything and you can pick it apart. You should have did this. You should have did that. You could have did this better. You could have did that better. You could have did this. You know, you, you, if you, you know, because that's the reason why, I, you, you ever get me in the passenger seat of your car, consider yourself lucky because, and I don't say anything, because I'm probably pushing a hole through the floorboard of your car. I'm doing everything I can to stop it, even though we're driving safely, because I get that critical of your driving. You know, I'll be driving, you'll be driving perfect, and I go, please stop. Get me, let me, just let me out, I'll walk. <laughs> you know, it's 40 miles, right? I, I don't care. Just get me out of this thing, because I, I, I am so critical of other people's driving, it, it makes me paranoid. I get in the car and I'm like, oh my God. Ah. So it's critical and fearful there, right? You know, but it happens. It gets to that point. I get sit there and I go, oh man. White knuckle it the whole way. You know, I just, but that's how we get it. But we criticize people. We look at it. We criti you know, we do it, and especially as churchgoers, we criticize churches all day long. You go to a church and you go, that sucked, that sucked, that sucked, I'm leaving. 
Well, if it sucked and you can identify it, then fix it and move forward. That's what it comes down to. You go, oh, I got to go. They don't like me. Why don't they like you? What did you do? I love how Jeremiah comes out and says it. Jeremiah 12, 3. Yet you know me, O Lord. You see me and test my thoughts about you. Drag them off like sheep to be butchered. Set them apart for the day of slaughter. Guys, think about this. What are your thoughts really about God? And do they need to be dragged off? Do they need to be taken away? Because some of us, we have really, really negative thoughts about what God is doing in our life, what God has done around us. And we just live in this point where we're going, God really needs to set them apart and drag them off. And we might need to start anew. We might need to start something different. They're toxic. God never takes care of me. God never does this. God never does that. God never does this. And it's like, wait a minute here. What are you doing? Let me give you a story here. Let me have you first fill in a blank first. Replace your toxic thoughts with God's truth. Replace your toxic thoughts with God's truth. Now, this is where it gets kind of good, is because some of us, we're out there and we're vultures, okay? We're, some of us, were just vultures. That's what our life is like. And some of us are like hummingbirds. And now I want you to look at this and go, is your life a vulture? Because your thoughts, you are always pursuing the negative. You are always pursuing death, always, all the time. You're like, I need to pursue, and I want to tell you something, Guess what a vulture lives off of and what they survive off of? They survive off seeking death. Now, maybe you're a hummingbird, and you fly around, and you're, guess what? You can tell he's happy-go-lucky because his wings are flapping all the time. It's like 140 beats a minute. It's like, you're like, I want to count those one time. And if it's going that fast, you guys, you ever been depressed and tried to do anything? You ever been like, oh, I don't want to do anything? I just want to pursue these negative thoughts. You can't do it. Obviously, hummingbirds seem to be a little happier because they can get out and just go zooming all the time because they are pursuing, what do hummingbirds pursue? Sweet nectar. That's what they pursue. Hummingbirds pursue sweet nectar. In your life, you have either been a vulture that is always considered, that is always pursuing death over and over again. You're like, I need to pursue death. That's where I've got to be at. I've got to chase after that. Or you've said, I'm going to pursue that sweet nectar. And Because guys, every day, vultures find death and hummingbirds find nectar. Every day. You've never, ever seen a hummingbird hanging out over another dead bird going, mmm, this is delicious. <laughs> it's never, ever happened. You've never sat there and said, Wow, that hummingbird is eating another animal. It is always pursuing life giving nectar, not death. What have you always been pursuing? What have you always been chasing after? Have you been chasing after death or have you been chasing after life giving nectar? Which one is it? That is the answer that you need to come up with. You need to start looking at it and going, where is it that I've been at? Where is my life? What have I been doing? What have I been chasing after? The peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, finally, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Man, Whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure. Oh, have I even thought once in the last week about any of that stuff? Just one time. Whatever's lovely. No, none of us have. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about those such things. You want to know why, you're, you, you, want to know why you can't get out of the rut that you're in? You continue to think about negative things. You won't think of what's true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, praiseworthy. You want to think about how my bank account continues to be negative, how my, bank, or how my car continues to have issues. You always think about those things. You don't think about how there's positive, that you have a roof over your head. Maybe you don't like the roof over your head, but it's there. 
You know, may not like that you, you know, you may, a lot of times, guys do this, they look at women, they go, man, she's hot. What about the one that you're with? What about the one that you're with? Why don't you look at her and say that about her? You chose to be with her. You made a decision. It's like, oh, nope, I got that one. I'm going to go get some more. <laughs> Think about what is lovely, admirable, what is excellent. Man, it's very simple. Take your mind out of the gutter and start focusing it up in the heavens. It's what it comes down to. All of a sudden, you're going to go, why is my life doing so much better? Because you're not worried about the negative stuff all the time. You're pursuing God, and you're loving him, and you're reaching out towards him, and you're going, I want to think about all that he's done, all the creation that he's done, all, of the, all the things that are so good. And you go, you don't have time to worry about the negative. You just don't. Romans 12, 2. You have to look at this. You know, if you don't have your Romans, it's, guys, if the P, you know, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Wait a minute here. I know it's cut off down there, but do not be transformed by the patterns of this world. In your life, have you been following what the people have been doing in this world? They complain about how their bank account is. They complain about what car they drive. They complain about this. If that's what you're doing, then when you need to go off and change and you start pursuing and being transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's where you need to be at. You know, I need to renew. I need to continue pursuing God. I need to have my mind focused on him and renewing. How do we do that? How do you do that? You get in the word. You focus on God. You focus on reading his word. You go, God, I need to spend more time with you because you talk about what's good. You t Guys, I hate to tell you this. Look at where our nation's going right now. It's because we all are just coming to what people say is good here. It's not good. It's not. This world is not good. And when we start pursuing these earthly things, we are not good in God's eyes. We are not good in God's eyes. And if we're not good, then we're sinners. You need to be transformed. You need to start having your mind renewed. You need to really start reading your Bible and start going, I need to spend some time here and go, what, what does God want to see on this, on this earth, in this world? Because he's given us instructions. If you read all of Romans 12, he's given you instructions on how you should live your life. If you open up Romans 12, the first line, make yourself a living sacrifice. A living sacrifice, always doing life for him. Always doing what he asked you to do. Not pursuing this earthly, these wants here. No, it's pursuing what God wants you to do, even though it's going to be a sacrifice. It's going to be hard. You're going to give up things that you want. Why? Because what he has is so much better for you than what you think that you want here. Pursue what God has in store for you. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then... You will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good and pleasing, perfect will. Wow. So if you don't read his Bible, if you don't read his word, you will never know what is good, what is bad, and you will never know what he wants for you. I hear it all the time. What does God want for me? I don't know. Have you read the Bible? Have you spent time with him in prayer? No. Well, come back after you've done that. Then we can talk. And every time I start a counseling session, how much time have you spent in the Bible? Well, I haven't picked it up. Thanks for wasting the first five minutes of this meeting. Go back home. Read your word. Spend time there. Because otherwise, I'm here to give you biblical advice. And if you're not reading the Bible, then it makes absolutely no difference what I tell you because you're not going to listen to it anyway. So you want, just here's your warning. You want a meeting with me? You better be reading the Bible. Because that's where the advice is coming from. I wanted you to be able to walk away and be able to confirm it and go, yes, Mike gave good biblical advice. That's what it comes from. But if you do not, and you won't be able to test what I say, how are you going to test what anybody else says? I hear it all the time. People go, the Bible says this. How do you know the Bible says that? You haven't read it. You haven't read the word. How do you know what it says? How are you able to test what is good and pleasing? You've never read the whole thing. You've never, most of you have never even read the whole New Testament. It would take you four hours if you just sat down and read it. Nope. 
but you can spend five hours on Facebook. You can spend five hours on there going, man, I love what Pastor Mike and the Edge are doing. Who cares if you don't know what's good and pleasing? Change what you're focusing your attention on. Maybe some of you don't use Facebook. Maybe you're into, you're, you're into reading Westerns. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but you're spending, you're spending tons of attention. Now, there's other people that I know do a lot of reading. My wife does tons of reading and stuff that she doesn't want to read. Tons of textbooks. She's got all kinds of stuff. That's the reason why you don't see her on Facebook that much more now. She's like, I can't, I, I don't have time for it. She's like, that's not what it is. <laughs> Transform yourself, change your direction, and learn what God's pleasing and perfect will is for your life. And the only way you'll figure that out is by focusing on what he has planned for you and by reading the word, by coming to service, by getting the thoughts that you continue to walk around with, these negative thoughts. You just walk and you go, oh, I'm so upset. I'm so, so angry. I've got this going. I've got that going. And a lot of times we end up self-medicating. We end up doing drugs. We end up you know, pursuing alcohol. We end up pursuing prescription drugs. If we start pursuing what God's perfect will is for our life, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, life becomes very easy and very pleasing. You'll find that you can be content with everything that God gives you. You go, God, thank you so much. And then you'll find that he delivers things out of nowhere. He just delivers. He just shows up and goes, here, I thought you needed this. And you go, I didn't, but I love it. Thank you. Thank you. You can change it. It can become completely different. And it starts right now. It starts right now. You, you guys are sitting here and you're going, you know, I, this last week, I just want you to wrap up all your thoughts and go, how much of it was good and pleasing? And maybe, maybe it's time to switch and maybe it's time to change and maybe it's time to start a relationship that focuses on God, that focuses on his will for your life, that focuses on what he wants you to do rather than what you think that you're supposed to do. Maybe you've had your whole relationship. You go, I'm saved, but you haven't really been saved because you haven't been pursuing his will and his pleasing will and his perfect will for your life. Maybe you've just been like, eh, I'm a Christian, but never acted like one. Maybe you just said, I'm gonna change that. I don't want these toxic thoughts. I wanna be happy and I wanna do the life that God has asked me to do. And if that's the case, you're gonna get an opportunity to reestablish and reconnect with him right now or maybe just start a new relationship because it's time to get our minds out of the gutter and it's time for us to start pursuing his will and be focused on the heavenly that he has in store for us. It's time for us to change. It's time for us to go, God, I am ready to do the life that you have promised for me and I'm ready to live for you instead of living in this negative and in these thoughts that have just continued to be toxic. It's time to move forward. It's time to do what God has asked you to do and he just says, do life with me. Do what I ask you to do. And I promise you everything else will fall in place. We can change it. It can be different. And it can start right now. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for all that you have done. Thank you so much for sending your son for me. For all of us. For each one of us that are a sinner that we continue to... to to block the way to come to know you, to continue to, that we, that we want to put up these walls and divide ourselves from you. God, I, I know that you sent him to tear down that wall and to make it to where I can be pure and I can be clean and I can be good in your eyes. And God, maybe I haven't looked that way or maybe I haven't acted that way, but I want to change that now. I want to start following you. I want to start living the life that you've given me, that, that you've said that I want you to do. I want to, I want to be good and I want to be pleasing. God, I know that I don't know everything right now, but I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to start reading your words so that way I can, I can sort out what's good and pleasing and, and what's bad and what's just continuing to drag me down and the negative and toxic thoughts. God, I'm ready to do life with you. I'm ready to pursue what you have in store for me. I'm ready to just go off and, and be happy. God, I know it's going to take some work and I know it doesn't happen overnight but I'm ready to start changing and I'm ready to start doing it and really pursue you and really live for you, to be positive, to be encouraging, to stop being so cynical and so negative and, so, and, and, and just doing the life that you've asked us to do. God, I need you. 
And I know that you sent your son for me because you knew that that was going to be the only thing that would make it to where I could come back to you. If you prayed that with me right now, if you prayed that, if you just said, I'm ready to do this, can you raise your hand for me? Can you put one hand up? Can you just said, I'm, I'm ready, I'm going with you, God. I'm tired of doing the life that I've been doing. I'm ready to do something. No, I can promise you, nobody's looking at you, and if they are looking at you, maybe you're going to give them the courage to raise their hand. You can put it up and go, I'm ready to do what you've asked me to do. God, I want to do the life that you said, that this is what I planned for you. Thank you for everybody who's raised their hands. And I say that God has been waiting and he's going, I'm waiting. I want to throw a party right now and welcome you. Let's go get the fattened calf and let's call all the neighbors because it is a celebration. God, thank you so much for giving those the courage to raise their hand and say, I'm ready to do life with you, that I'm ready to follow you, that I'm ready to know what's good and pleasing for my life. Even though I know it's going to be hard, there's going to be sacrifice. God, thank you. God, thank you for all that you have done for each one of us, delivering us here today so that we can start focusing on you and pursuing you and doing life for you and just removing the toxic thoughts that have dragged us down. God, thank you. We pray all of this in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, you may have... You may have noticed that we didn't collect your connection card at the beginning of this because we want to be able to connect with you. We want to be able to do life with you, and it's going to take you to put down what's going on and what are the thoughts that have held you back and where has your mind been at. And so we ask that if you recommitted and you said, I'm ready to do life, would you raise your hand and check the box? Say, I'm recommitting or I've committed new or whatever it's been and just really fill out that. Fill out what you think, what you have going on in your heart, what's in your mind, and go, I can start renewing it and transform it right now. I can start doing something different and start pursuing God. It doesn't have to be the same old, same old. It can change right here, right now. As they play the last song for us tonight, they're going to be passing the buckets to collect those connection cards. If you didn't get an opportunity to, if you didn't get an opportunity to be able to drop in your tithe, you didn't get an opportunity to put in your offering or any of that stuff, then, then please do that now. But please don't be afraid to reach down and to say, I've done this and I'm changing my life and I'm doing something different and I'm ready to move forward with God. And the thoughts that I've had have been negative and I'm ready to change them now. It's time to start doing life differently and it can start right here, right now. Guys, please stand as our worship team leads us out and let's sing and let's do something different because what we've been doing maybe hasn't been working. Whew. Can you guys give it up one time for your pastor, please, before he gets off the stage?